Hello, I'm Francisco Ponce. I'm a neurosurgeon at the Vero Neurological Institute. And in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, targeting the globus pallidus interna for deep brain stimulation surgery. Uh, so I'm going to be walking through the steps on the FrameLink uh, software, the surgical planning station made by Medtronic. And uh, when I plan a GPI, uh, I rely uh, heavily upon uh, the, uh, this article by Dr. Phil Starr. Um, and this is the figure uh, from that article showing kind of that sweet spot within the GPI at the mid commissural plane, so where Z equals zero. And in particular, this distance of uh, 3.6 millimeters off the internal capsule. So I'll use that uh, in my uh, planning of the GPI uh, DBS. So uh, this is the uh, stealth system. Uh, here, uh, we've already obtained a CT scan of a patient with a left cell frame. You can see the fiducial markers right here and I'm uh, merging the various studies. Uh, all my patients undergo uh, SPGR with and without contrast, proton density, and T2 FSE uh, imaging um, the day before surgery. And then on the day of surgery, we use the intraoperative CT scanner to obtain our registration scan. So right now I'm merging all the MRIs to the registration scan. I've inactivated the uh, T2 FSEs because for GPI, I don't use those. I use the proton density. Uh, for direct targeting, and that's on a GE scanner. So we've completed the merge, and next we're going to reformat the images to slices that are parallel to the mid commissural plane. So I've not yet selected the uh, PCPC. And uh, you may have noticed that when I do the uh, merge, I do not verify accuracy before I hit verify. Uh, I, really, I do that here, where I kind of check to see uh, whether the, in this case, three different MRI scans independently merge uh, correctly with the CT scan by checking the uh, ACPC on each scan after defining it on the SPGR without contrast. So I usually go with the um, posterior border of uh, anterior commissure and anterior border of the uh, posterior commissure. So kind of a usual length, I usually think of 24 as the average uh, for uh, ACPC distance. So I use the floor of the fourth ventricle, uh, posterior kind of parietal aspect of the um, falcs. I look to see how midline the uh, uh, septum pellucidum is, and then, but typically I'll use the anterior falcs as well. So now we've reformatted the, the MRI. I'm going to verify now that the ACPC on the SPGR matches that of the proton density, which you just saw there, and next the um, uh, SPGR with uh, contrast. And I'm going to window this to make sure it's, uh, we can see what we need to see. So the SPGR without contrast is sort of my basic scan, and then the with contrast is to avoid blood vessels. So what I'm doing right now is I'm uh, making my initial plans. So this left GPI, and I just use generic user uh, co uh, consensus coordinates 21, 2, minus 4. And this gives, gives me a starting point with which to uh, define my trajectory. Uh, also, uh, using Dr. Starr's article from 2006, uh, I usually try to get a um, uh, zero degree uh, trajectory, so that's what I'm doing up here. You can see I'm dragging it right there. So you can drag the entry point. So I'm, I'm at 0.2 degrees here, and I'm looking at this corner right there, and I'm looking at how I'm going into a sulcus, and I'm dragging my trajectory now a little bit more lateral. I'm at 4.1 degrees in order to avoid the sulcus, and I usually come on right about the, uh, the coronal suture. So 
you'll see here again, I'm going to drag this to a zero degree parasagittal trajectory. And again, kind of hitting a sulcus right here, so I'm going to drag that out laterally, I'm about to 2.8 degrees. Kind of check what things look like with the blood vessels. No red flags. So now I have my trajectory. So uh, the next step is going to be targeting of the GPI. So I'm rewindowing my proton density scan. And typically, I target at the uh, mid commissural plane, so that's my starting point. And uh, keeping in mind that the consensus coordinates are at minus four, so four millimeters below the mid commissural plane. So these are kind of my, my generic starting points 4.5 millimeters anterior, zero for the Z, which is mid commercial plane. And then from here, I kind of fine tune and adjust my X, uh, depending upon where the internal capsule is. And you can see here sort of that accessory, la accessory lamina of the GPI. So that little stripe right here is within the GPI. This right here is the border between GPI and GPE. And then there's putamen out here. And there's GPE in this structure right here. So I'm looking to kind of go right between the GPI, GP border and that accessory lamina within the GPI, keeping approximately 3.6 millimeters away from the internal capsule. And once I like what I see, then I, kind of, I drop that down about five or six millimeters. Looking at the optic track, you can see the optic track is right here. And I reset my target at the level of the uh, dorsal lateral aspect of the optic track. Just basically dropping it along that, and I, I, I use the feature up in this panel right here where I can define at that target of mid comfortable point, I can drop it. So same thing over here, uh, 4.5. I look to see, maybe I can see a little bit better at one above the mid control plane, but actually I decided to prefer at zero. So I continue the targeting here. You can see here the number is a little bit more medial than we saw on the right. Checking that distance, some, you know, about four. So I'll snug it up a little bit, bring a little bit closer to the internal capsule. So I use that four and a half, sort of as that four and a half and zero, that's usually where I start, and then I will adjust depending upon that distance from the internal capsule. So that looks like something I'd like. So now I set that as my target and then I drop it five millimeters down. Look to see where it is. There's a blood vessel here. Uh, optic track is running about here. And make that my new coordinate, my new uh, target. So here's where I do my right skull entry, which is um, uh, a third trajectory that crosses midline that starts where the right GPI trajectory hits the skull and ends at the left GPI target. And that's how I plan both incisions, the left and the right incision, using the XYZ coordinates for the left. So there's a CT scan. I'm on the right GPI plan, go to the surface of the skull, and then I set that as my entry for this right skull entry plan. So I'm all set. I've got my left cell coordinates here. So right now uh, we're transcribing these, copying them down. So XYZ ring and arc for right GPI and left GPI. And then under right skull entry, only the ring and arc.
So after this step, scrub in, do the operation, put the leads in, do the microelectric recording, do any testing with the uh, electrodes. Here I'm looking to see if I can With the Lexile frame, I always look to see if I need to uh, change the coordinates from left to right uh, by testing to see if I use the same Lexile coordinates for Y and Z on the left, on the right, if I'm uh, what what my error would be. So that's what I was doing right at the end. So this is uh, after the lead placement. So we've completed the merge of the uh, C the CT scan with the electrodes. You can see here, there's my uh, trajectory, it's visible here. There are my two electrodes. I'm gonna re-window uh, re the CT scan so we can kind of have the actual electrodes pop out. There we go. So you can see one, two, three, four. And already you can kind of see that we're pretty, we're pretty good here. So I want to clear that. I want to have to see the uh, that marker. Okay, so there's my contact zero, and I'm 0.4 millimeters off, so that's good. At this point, the patient's still open, waiting to be closed, and I'm just verifying that we're accurate. So we're 0.4 on this side as well. So 0.4 millimeter error on both sides. I just run through it, look to see how we're doing. There's the elect there are the, the electrodes, and there's the GPI GP border here and here. So at this point, we're good to go. We proceed with closure, and what I'm going to be doing here is annotate the uh, eight elect eight contacts. probably fast forward through these steps. Okay. And this is my documentation. Uh, I take snapshots and burn these uh, images to a disk. So document ACPC. Document my target. Then I go to that mid commissural plane image where here I'm at 20.5, 4.5 and 0, 5 millimeters above target. So I take a snapshot of that. Same thing here, I've already taken a shot there. Go up 5 millimeters, get these nice round numbers here, take a shot of that. So that's my direct target right here. Now I window in the um, electrodes. And go through taking snapshots of each electrode. So basically I have about, I have 13 images for every GPI case. Eight contacts, two targets, two targets at the mid commercial plane, about five millimeters above the actual target, and uh, ACPC. All right, so I think that's it. So. Uh, that's how I target GPI, and uh, this video included uh, verification of stereotactic accuracy using the Antropative Scanner as well. So I hope that helped, and uh, thanks for watching.